Now, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Today is going to be an interesting exploration of a pen which I got about six months ago. When I saw this on Amazon, I couldn't pass it up. Those of us that grew up in the 70s and 80s in the United States recognize BIC, but uh, certainly not for this format. BIC made a disposable fountain pen. They get two of them in a pack. These are blue. We turn over, you can see it's uh, obviously for international use. And the company is uh, still based in Connecticut, which is interesting. Uh, these are made in China. And we have an interesting uh, piece here for education. <clears throat> so I wanted to just give you this package before I opened it up. Obviously, we need to see how these write. But it's just an interesting design. And if we wanted to compare it to the number one most popular disposable, the Varsity, there are some similarities is what you would expect because... Uh, injection molded plastics and things of that nature but what I'm interested to try out is this varsity could be a, up to 20 years old I carried it as my uh, knock around daily writer pen I generally this was my backup pen if I ran out of ink in my regular fountain pen I didn't have to go to a ballpoint I could always grab this out and this pen has written every time first time without issue and it stayed in a briefcase for a year I took it out and it wrote right away so I attribute that a lot to the design and I also attribute it a lot to the ink that they've used in here because I think they really figured out that combination of ink and pen to allow this very cheap inexpensive pen to be able to work the way that it does so we're going to explore this a little bit more. Um, those of you that might be interested in these types of pens, I don't think they're made anymore, so they're not in regular distribution. They're not on the BIC website. But you will find occasionally them still for sale. They're, uh, Amazon is out of stock. But it's uh, you know just to me hilarious to find that uh, BIC, as we all know, for a cheap uh, <coughs> ballpoint, actually dip their toes into the fountain pen world. Taking the big pen out of the blister pack, I've written with it a little bit, so uh, we'll go into the detail on the writing. But just to compare it to the BIC that I grew up with and familiar with, this uh, stick pen with just a slip-on cap. Very inexpensive, but very reliable. It worked a lot. Nice to chew on, which is something that a lot of us used to do with our pencils. They were nice and wood. So the pens, this one is in pretty good shape. The translucent barrel, you can see the ink level in that refill. Uh, the original ones were crystal. Uh, you can see right through them. They weren't, uh, this is probably a later model of it, but still the same design for those of you that may not have been familiar with the uh, Bic stick pens. I also added two other uh, Japanese uh, low-end pens, the uh, Platinum Preppy and the Pilot Petite One. I did a full review on the Petite One. is one of the first fountain pens I reviewed. I didn't do anything on the Pilot Preppy or the Platinum Preppy because, well, I buy pens just to play around and to try them out. And if I don't feel they, they have a value of interest or if I'm not motivated, then I don't do an actual review on them. I could never get the Preppy to write the way I like. The nib is kind of dry and fine. Uh, I eyedroppered both of these, which is what I would do with these type of pens. Maybe it's not the right ink in here. I didn't worry about the other ones that I got. I didn't play around with them. I wasn't motivated because I really like the petite one. I like the size. I like the shape. Both of these have a good feel to them. Um, the Platinum has that unique rubber, uh, sorry, the uh, spring in the top of the cap which does a seal mechanism I haven't noticed that it still dries out pretty quickly at least from my experiences not certainly like the the Platinum Century with uh, has that um, seal mechanism at the top I looked at a review of uh, a couple years ago of the uh, BIC disposable fountain pen and it, it brought up a point that I thought was interesting if we look at all of these pens, they, ha they share a lot in common, which I think has a lot to do with imitation, 
or copying. They all have a, a stamped steel nib. Uh, no breather hole. I guess that might cost more money or else they figured out the breather hole doesn't serve any function. The Pilot has a mock one there, which uh, a couple other pens have. The Platinum does too. Or sorry, the Bic does. The Platinum doesn't. And if you turn them over, you'll notice a similar type of feed design. And you'll notice the little wings on the nibs that attach it to the feed. They're all a little bit different as I try to put them into a uh, usable form. It also looks similar to the Lamy Safari All-Star nib also. And there's probably other pens that I have that have a similar stamp nib design. So it does work. Um, you know, these pens do write relatively well. And they also have a capillary feed, which is more visible here in the Petite one, but it's also kind of visible in the other ones. The Petite one, when I filled it, you could actually watch the ink move through the section and eventually uh, through the wick there into the uh, feed into the nib. And a review of inexpensive disposable pens. Um, I'm not going to use my... Uh, already a dot pad or um, any type of other notebooks that cost substantially more than the pen. So this is a school notebook I picked up from Walmart. Um, you know, probably no more than a dollar. It's a nice uh, durable cover on it, which is nice. So let's see uh, how the pen works on this paper. So this is more of a kind of an overview of disposable pens, uh, you know, obviously focusing on the Bic one because it's just kind of cute. Um, apologize that it's no longer available, but um, it was an attempt of a, what I would call a low-end pen manufacturer to uh, appeal to another market. When I was doing my research, I found that they still do make uh, fountain pens. Uh, they're just not sold in the United States anymore. Uh, we'll show you some of the things that I found yeah, they make different clicks and twists, and they seem to be more oriented towards uh, the young uh, market uh, versus this pen, which is probably covers a whole range of markets from people who just like fountain pens to people who just uh, want a, an interesting different type of pen to write with. That ink view window there shows you there's a substantial amount of ink in here, you know, six, seven, eight milliliters, I would guess, looking at that barrel and assuming that it's full of ink. The pen has apparently quality control issues and a whole bunch of other things that I've uh, read about and seen on other reviews. The ink that's uh, on this barrel and cap has a tendency to flake off and chip. The cap posts very uh, securely. In fact, you know, it's hard to get on. There is a, a cap liner in there, uh, which is going to help with uh, keeping the pen from drying out. It does post. And it posts fine. I mean, uh, people talked about having a trouble with the posting, but it seems fine. And I don't see any, any distortion or anything there that would indicate that it's going to be cracking. So let's uh, put this nib to paper and, and see how it works. I mean, it writes pretty good. It's definitely smooth. Definitely lays down a, a, a nice patch of ink. Dries quickly. This is fairly absorbent paper, so I would expect that. I mean, if you just were using this pen without knowing what it was and you wrote with it, you would be quite happy with it. It's very smooth. Yeah, I think you can hear that. The other thing that I think is nice is it seems to have a little bit of, uh, of give to it. So let's take a look at that. Not really changes the way that the line goes down. But it just has a little bit of bounce to it. As I would call it, it's a little bit soft. I'm zoomed in a little bit so you can get an idea of what it's like, so I'm trying to get that to work. So overall, from a writing perspective, I think it's uh, 
very good for the price and, and the investment. But let's take a look at how it compares to the 20-year-old Varsity. Uh, I don't think the Varsity has any better quality aspects to it. I mean, the paint still can ship off. As you can see, the ink window, there's a lot of ink in here. Even though these are both medium, the Varsity for um, a Japanese medium is, is pretty good. You know, it's definitely a medium, kind of like the Bic is a medium. Uh, this nib is, as you can probably hear, not quite as smooth as, as the uh, Bic nib. It also has that same type of springiness to it, so that's uh, common probably of the design of the nib and the way it's shaped, as you can see from the shoulders and the way it, it fits on the thing. So overall, what's the bottom line opinion? Well, I think Vic made an attempt. They may have looked at the uh, market that the uh, Varsity had and said, gee, maybe we can get into that. I don't know. Maybe there was an executive who liked fountain pens at Bic. Um, obviously went to China. Maybe they were already making a pen like this in China. I don't know. I've never seen anything else like this from anybody else. So and yeah, maybe this pen is, is made in China. Who knows? Um, as you can see, I chewed on this one quite a bit. This has a blue end on it, but I think this is a, a black pen. It has a black end on it, so I probably switched caps at one point in time and didn't realize it because I had a couple of these that I was using on a daily basis. I tried to look for the actual blue body or the, the black cap, in, but I couldn't find it. So hopefully you uh, enjoyed this little look at some inexpensive pens. I think it's good to, to look what it is, and if you just like writing with fountain pens. There are a lot of options out there that I think are very affordable and give you a good experience. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this, this little look. So keep writing, keep exploring, keep enjoying. Have a good day. Bye.